Welcome to the Nav Viking tutorials. I'm Johannes Gudmundsson, founder of Anecta, a Microsoft Dynamics NAV Gold certified partner. Hello and welcome to the Coffee Week tutorials. What I'm going to do right now is uh, throw the wrench into the posting groups. This is going to be the final posting group video for a little bit. I'm going to move into something else. We've actually taken uh, probably three weeks on this uh, and it was important and it's proving a point. And uh, for anyone who needs to really know posting groups, I hope this is going to be very helpful. Uh, and sort of in the end of this, I'm trying to explain um, the whole idea behind uh, those four accounts in purchasing um, that are a little bit elusive uh, and people don't get really why they are there. And what I'm going to do is go through exactly what's the reason behind those uh, accounts. And so you'll see you have like an aha moment. Uh, that's why. <laughs> so well, what I'm going to do is go back here into an AV. And if you jump into this without seeing the previous videos, I encourage you to look at them first because I am actually starting uh, pretty far into the whole posting explanation. Um, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go here and look at item or items and uh, uh, I have created a Thanksgiving coffee mug and in my Thanksgiving coffee mug I basically set it up here pretty simply it's a FIFO it's set up with general protocols to the retail um, and so what I'm going to do now is add something called an overhead rate that's right here overhead rate uh, for five dollars. I actually had put that in before. Uh, so what that means is that whenever I buy this product, I want the system to put aside five dollars uh, for each, uh, you know, each of the item. Uh, so if I buy if, if I buy five, twenty-five dollars will be actually put aside. And uh, and we're gonna see how that posts. So okay, uh, just close that out. I'm going to go here into um, purchase order. So I'm going to just go right ahead into buying this. I'll do it similarly to what I've done before. I'll just create a new one. Um, we're going to buy from the American, uh, what was it called? Wood Exports. That's right. And uh, the posting date, I'm actually going to throw this one on 11. Uh, 11 18 and I have to put in the invoice number that's going to be ABC 887766 and the type is item oops Thanksgiving coffee mug uh, I'm buying it into the blue location so I'm going to get uh, 10 and so that's going to be $150 <clears throat> they were buying it for Okay, pretty straightforward. Purchase order, American Wood Export, uh, posted on the 11.11 for 10. Okay, so I go ahead and post that. And I'm not going to look at the posted invoice. Um, uh, yes, that's fine. So now we're going to go into the chat of accounts. And I am going to take a look at the uh, limit total for... 11, 11 just like I've done before 18 now you can see my posting here and I'm going to take a look at only the net change like that and then I am going to filter on only posting just like that I could have actually saved this view well I always have uh, the date I have to change, but you can actually save without changing the date, the net change not zero and posting. Um, it's kind of a cool feature here. You can do save view as, and then it gets added to the site. But anyways, without uh, going on a tangent. So here we can see that it's actually hitting five accounts, right? And that is because I added the overhead. So there is a new account here called overhead applied coming in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my uh, T accounts 
And let me just go ahead and copy this and paste here. Uh, and I'm going to just create a new T account called overhead applied or overhead cost. Let's call it overhead cost applied. Um, and now I'm going to go through actually how this posts on the T accounts again. So just give me one quick thing here, aligning all the stuff so it looks nice together. There we go. And we only need the top half because we're not selling anything. Okay, so we are buying, right? And as we're buying, we get inventory and we incur debt to the vendor. So let's take a look at that first. The inventory gets increased by 200. So we get 200 into inventory. Good. Uh, these numbers here are from previous postings from previous videos. So I just kept them there. Uh, and I just keep going with T accounts. So don't worry about those for this actual, this actual um, example. Now, 200 is what goes into inventory, but accounts payable, what gets hit there? That's vendor domestic, that's actually 150. So if we only had accounts payable in inventory as our accounts here, uh, we couldn't do overhead cost because the $50, where are they going, right? So I put 150. Now, what offsets accounts payable then, if it's not going to be the same thing as inventory? And we had talked about that before. It's actually purchase. Uh, sorry, it's supposed to be on the liability side, of course. Yeah, purchase is the one that offsets. And that makes accounts payable happy because it has an offset and it's account called purchase, right? So what uh, offsets the rest? Well, let's take a look at that. We have something called um, overhead. Uh, let's start with direct cost applied. Direct cost applied gets hit with the 150. So that is the direct cost we paid to the vendor, right? That's why it's called direct cost applied. And that gets hit with 150. And now we've offset inventory by 150 of the 200. And where does the rest go? That goes into overhead cost applied, which is the $50. So that goes here. So you can see that accounts payable has to be in balance with purchase. It's not in balance with inventory necessarily. It is if you don't use something like overhead cost and you know other things like that. But if you're using those, uh, it will not balance out. Accounts payable will balance out with purchase. Uh, direct cost applied plus overhead cost applied, in this case, will balance out with inventory. It could be more accounts that go in there. It could be purchase variances, all kinds of things. Um, but you can see how inventory needs more accounts to balance to it. And that's why it's broken up. Um, so you cannot just work with two accounts. It's not sufficient to to do kind of like the acrobatics you need to do when it comes to costing. And this is an excellent example. For example, if you need to accrue and you're increasing your inventory value, um, you can use this. And uh, there are many reasons for that. Uh, there could be handling that you're bringing it into the warehouse. You might be renting the warehouse and you want to accrue for that rent or something like that. And you want to actually build that into the inventory value. And that is, uh, you know, there are circumstances where that actually works in gap rules. So anyways, that works. And, and where did these uh, cost accounts come from? Let me just go ahead and go into the general uh, posting setup right here. And I had actually shown one more account here. So I did show column and we were was, uh, working with domestic retail. And I added this column right here, overhead applied. So you can see we have direct cost applied and overhead applied account, and they're all here. And so the system is taking into account those. And of course you have your purchase account. So those are the offsetting accounts to inventory. Purchase account offsets AP, direct cost applied and overhead applied account, in this case, offset the inventory. And that is a wrench but I hope it makes perfect sense now.
So try it out yourself. Uh, and if you like this video, please hit thumbs up or subscribe um, if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.